Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net and the Kai Porter Magazine. And this is a video cast, a special video cast with Neil Hutchinson. Uh, we are talking about the closest thing to kiteboarding, which is basically a new system. It's a new portable cable park system, uh, otherwise known as System 2.0. Okay, so uh, well, why don't you introduce Ryan, yourself, Neil, and, um, and just tell us a little um, bit about what's going I'm on Neil and Hutchinson. what this new system is about. And I am the sales rep for Slingshot Kiteboarding and the sales uh, rep for Slingshot Wakeboarding um, in the southeast area of the U.S. and also the national sales rep for other projects and the Sestec 2.0 system. And uh, I'd like to explain it to you a little bit more. Yeah, like the, the 2.0 system. I mean, first off, we're a kiteboarding magazine. Um, and you know, people are probably saying, "Well, what what does this have to do with kiteboarding?" So why, why okay, don't you explain well, you uh, maybe the crossover and how a years. kiteboarder might be interested? And why yeah, a kiteboarder might be interested in this? <laughs> yeah, it might, it might be okay, near well, twelve by, by now. Um, but you know, I think it's longer than that by now. Ten, twelve years, whatever yeah, it's been, we've be always been trying to find now. a simulator. Um, for kiteboarding, where we don't need wind, and we can still practice our tricks, we can still learn fundamentals, and so on and so on. Now with the 2.0, the weight is set up where there's actually two points, and the cable just goes back and forth in between those two points, operated by another person. Um, you can shorten up the line to the cable super easy, and basically when you're sitting in the water, the bar can be hanging two feet above you out in the water, so when you reach up and grab onto that bar, it's almost like having your kite at 12 o'clock. Then as the cable starts, it'll be like sending the kite to 10.30. You could then get up right heel side or toe side to the other end. The cable then turns around and goes the other way where you would do a transition just like you would on a kite. You would follow the cable and go back the other way. You can do air transitions. You can do regular heel side calves, toe side calves. Not a problem. All the time, with our kite is more a like a 10:30 sort of position. Um, as your kite would be. Um, if you fall, you don't have to let go of the handle. You can just ride it out just like you would do a kite. And in fact, just the other week, I was riding it and testing things out. I actually tied a chicken rope to the handle and rode in the chicken rope, hooked in. So there's a lot of similarities, and I'm sure you're going to see it by some of the video we got. It's uh, pretty mind blowing. Well, Matt Sexton was here this weekend, and he just couldn't no. stop talking about it. I don't know if that's because he's your sidekick or that he really is excited. No, it's, it really does sound like something yeah, very, it, very it cool. Really is. You know, um, it's, and uh, I think you know, it's a, a great kind of um, alternative to no you wind. In Texas, where it's windy a lot of the time, I'm sitting you know, here right uh, now in South you know, Florida. Nobody has kiteboarded in the last two Texas months. You know, the schools have been teaching. Right Everybody now, is dying Florida. to get on the water. And you know, there's nothing we can do because the wind isn't here. But with this two-point system, myself and Matt, we've been experimenting with it, and riding on it, and you know, I'm fully convinced I can teach a beginner a lot of fundamental skills um, of kiteboarding. Just getting out on the board, riding toe side, heel side, water starts, hooked in, unhooked. Body dragging because when you fall and you don't let go of the handle or ride it out, where you've got to get back to your board, you can just put one arm out and just body drag it exactly the same as a kite. So it's really good for beginners, but also on the flip side, you've got more advanced riders that are trying to learn new tricks, maybe moves, KGBs, all the rest of it. With that short line, it makes it so much easier and less punishing when you don't stick the trick than what it would be behind boat or a regular cable and therefore people are learning and the, the speed that people are learning on this thing is pretty amazing I'm not doing most not yet but now I've got the tools to learn how to do them so are you doing most now or what you know it's definitely making things easier than a regular cable or a boat or a jet ski and I think it's the only thing apart from a kite where you can actually take a fall and Face plant not quite as hard and not have to let go and just ride it out. You could never do that behind a boat. You could never do that on a regular cable. Not safely anyhow. I think it is 
you know, it's hard to put a number to it, but let me give you some examples. I'm watching people out at the projects right now, never whiteboarded before. They're getting on this, they're getting up almost immediately because the pool is not just um, level with the water. You've got that angle now, and that angle is key to getting people up on a board because it's actually lifting them out of the water. I saw somebody up there the other week that had gone from riding behind a boat where they could jump a little bit, um, you know, little jumps off a wake, and within 20 minutes they were pulling sick railies. Yeah, they screwed a few of them up, but no, they didn't get hurt. They didn't have to let go, and it was just boom, back up again, away we go again. It's just one after the other. In 20 minutes, this person was like looking like a rock star, and it, it kind of blew my mind. Well, you know, I. I've always been somewhat into wakeboarding. I'm not a great wakeboarder myself, but you know, I wakeboard and you know, I also look for things to do in the summer when there isn't wind here. And with that being said, and being the kiteboarding rep for Slingshot, we've always been battling this no wind problem. I've tried building simulators out of trampolines, building simulators with bungee cords, weights, pulleys, could never find anything. And then it was, I think it was Matt Sexton, he forwarded me a YouTube video of the two-point system, and I saw it, and my mind just started going crazy. And then I visited uh, the projects, Cable Park in Orlando, where I got to see one in actual use, and it just hit me. I was like, this is it. This is what we've all been waiting for. And uh, I got to talking with the guys up there, and they somewhat agreed to me but you know I went for it and now I'm gonna be the sales rep for it and I think it's, it's gonna be awesome okay um, well in regards to portability yes it's portable but it's not something you would set up at the beginning of a day and go and ride it for the day with your friends and then pack it up at the end of the day and go home there's a little bit more to it than that um, Basically, with two people that know what they're doing in normal sort of conditions, um, it takes around about six hours to set up. Breaking it down is that much easier, but it's not a permanent structure. So, if you're, say, living where you are, right down in Texas, and you set up a cable park in your backyard, um, on a body of water and all the rest of it, and then all of a sudden, two years later, you move. You could literally pack this thing up and take it with you. Um, I'm actually going to be on the road with it with Matt Sexton, um, who is working very closely with me on this, and is in fact my partner when it comes to events, where we're going to be going from location to location and setting this thing up a week at a time, doing events, doing contests, doing demos, having fun, and just showing people what it's all about. and. It's, it's sometimes it's a little hard to explain and really put the picture in your head. You've just got to see it, and more importantly, you've just got to go ride it. And any kiteboarder that went and rode this system right away would be like, oh my God, that is it. Not yet, but there is one person, uh, Mike Walsh from the other side of Board Sports uh, down in uh, Isla Mirada in the Keys. He is buying one as we speak right now. Um, it is his system is actually on a boat right now coming from Europe and he will be getting it next month and he will be the first kite school in the United States or pretty much anywhere that I know of in fact that will be utilizing this in his school program and also in his wakeboarding program and we're gonna be having an event on uh, I believe it's the 26th of September down in the Keys um, which is gonna be pretty cool super excited my biggest dilemma is, is not really a dilemma, in it? It's just, we're just getting it out there, and this is something that I have come across and has totally blown my mind, and is like, we've all been searching for that no wind alternative which can relate to a kiteboarder, and now we got it. But not only is it good for that, it's also amazing for wakeboarding. I talk about it being real easy to learn from by having a short line, but you don't have to have a short line. You can lengthen the line just like and turn it into a, a regular angle that any cable park would have. And it's continuous riding. You know, it, we have a winch system out there, 
but it's not continuous. You have a cable park, but it costs millions. But now you have this two-point system, which doesn't cost that much, and it can be moved. I mean, a full system set up, you're looking under $40,000. And if you've been out and priced the um, cost of wakeboard boats right now, I mean, you can see that difference. Also, running it, it doesn't cost hardly anything. Um, it's all electric, um, therefore green. You can plug it in. It's going to burn about $10 worth of electricity per day on a six-hour day of running it. There's no oil changes. You can't ding a prop. Um, you don't have to wash and wax it afterwards. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Dude, let's make it over there. I'd love to come over this winter and uh, let's come do a demo down at your place and have, have a bit of fun on it for a week. That was another one of my ideas where I, my brain has been going at a million mile an hour thinking of all the different avenues we can go down. A kiteboard, wakeboarding event where I think we're all starting to see now a huge crossover from wakeboarding, kiteboarding, and kiteboarding, wakeboarding. Now, let's just start putting this stuff together. You know, a lot of wakeboarder, uh, kiteboarders out there right now are doing some serious, you know, wake style tricks, low kites, all the rest of it. And I also not lot, know a lot of wakeboarders that are now getting into kiteboarding. So, why don't we start to marry these two things together and build something of a combination of extreme sports and put them, put them both together. Literally, to purchase one of these, to have a setup, um, you're looking at under 40,000, just under 40,000. As for a regular setup, um, you can put it pretty much on a small piece of water that is, I would say, a minimum of about 200, 200 foot in width, um, or up to about 700 foot. Um, it doesn't quite matter if the width of the lake is greater than that because you can go from, you know, cut a corner off or you can go diagonally across the lake. You can always find that perfect setup, no problem at all. And, uh, you know, for under 40 grand, you're good to go. Realistically, not a lot. I mean, you know, it all depends on the size of the lake and the span you put it across as it's an adjustable cable you can use it's uh, you know anywhere from 200 feet to 700 feet I mean once you start getting bigger than 700 feet there's certain problems that arise anything under than 200 feet it just starts getting a bit small but if you can find six to have 700 feet of distance across water you're looking at a real good time and you know that can be in a lake the size you would never ever be able to run a boat in because it, it's just not big enough. Um, it could be in a large swimming pool. It could be a trench dug and lined and a man-made simple lake, custom built. There's so many alternatives here and so many ways we can make this happen. You could, if somebody had a big enough warehouse and you had put an above ground swimming pool inside. You could have it indoors, perhaps in a cold climate where you can't do anything in the winter months because it's too cold out, but now you've got an indoor cable park. I mean, the boundaries, uh, we're working on it right now. It's one of the things that we're looking into and it's gonna be done. And uh, we've got a few people we're talking to right now in colder climates of the US where in the winter months and perhaps not around mountains where you can't do too much outside, we can now take this indoors. And they've done it with motocross. There's indoor stadiums in the northern parts of the US where it's just too cold and various other sports. There's no reason why we can't be doing wakeboarding and so on. Um, the smallest area I've seen it set up in, I, I've seen it set up in about 350 foot length. Um, it's actually a ski resort up north where the lake at the top of the mountain in the summertime when the snow, uh, ski resort is closed down, that lake was what they used to make uh, um, snow from. Um, they've put one in there, so it now has use in the summertime as well as mountain biking and various other sports. And that's about 350 feet. It works, not a problem. Um, but I would imagine once you start getting 
much below 250. It, things are just getting tight. But you, you know, you could go as low as a hundred, um, as small as a hundred feet if you wanted to. It's just going to get tighter. The craziest setup I've ever seen was actually it was actually at the trade show last year, and it was the uh, the Wake Lab downtown Orlando where the projects came in and uh, sponsored by Red Bull, and they set up the most amazing kicker slide up rail setup directly downtown Orlando in the middle of a city with two 2.0 systems running over the top of it. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. They ran an event at night. It was all flood lit. And I mean, if you just, you know, go on YouTube or anything, just type that in. It's, you know, the Wake Lab Orlando. It was it was one of the most amazing things I've seen. Yep, that's the, that's the name of the company, Sesatec. 2.0 system. I, I I really enjoy it. You know, I mean, I've been wakeboarding, you know, for a while now, and just like you said, you can get beat up behind a boat, and I've kind of got fed up with getting beat up. My knees are shut, and you know, it's all the rest of it. I can now go out on this, and it's one hell of a workout. I can practice new moves. I can, we can set it up almost anywhere. Or we could turn it into a hardcore sort of regular cable park where, you know, if you want that angle less, we can do that. It's just all of the different aspects to this and all of the different locations we can take it to. And it's just basically broadened our horizons way greater than we've ever had them before in our sort of board sports. And that's really exciting. Okay, well, it's being put on by uh, Mike Walsh and uh, other side board sports down in the Keys. Um, last year, um, he ran the first annual Greengrass um, wakeboarding event when we used a winch across a lake. It was a lot of fun, we had a lot of people come out for it, but uh, you know, with a winch system, you gotta walk it back after every rider and so on and so on. Uh, Mikey has recently purchased a uh, two-point system and this year we're gonna be using that and we're gonna have a cable park basically down in the Keys and we're gonna have it for that event and Mike will have it down there year-round. Um, it should be a killer event. I know a lot of the Slingshot team are coming um, down to it. I've heard rumors of uh, a couple of other big-name teams coming and uh, uh, quite a few personalities. Um, it should be an awesome time. It's gonna run three days over a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, it's gonna go off. And unlike a lot of my other events where we're sitting there saying, well, I hope it's windy, this time it doesn't matter. We're going for it, it's gonna happen. We got dates set, super stoked, and I know a lot of kiteboarders are gonna show up, and I know a lot of wakeboarders are gonna show up, and it's gonna be a good time. I've already seen it start to happen uh, here in Florida. You know, uh, the crossover right now from going to the cable park and just riding with people at the cable park, I've, I now know a lot of kiteboarders are going to the cable park and uh, saying, there's no wind at the moment, that's what I'm gonna do this summer. But with those riders going to the cable and talking to cable riders, I now know a lot of cable riders that are like going, dude, I really want to give that cable a go and let's give it a shot. And I have actually taught a couple of people from the cable park how to kiteboard. And they're stoked, man. I mean, a good friend of mine, Hamish McDonald's, he's, he's got a new saying, unless it's blowing 20, I'm going to go and pay 20 and ride for sure. Objections? I haven't really had any yet. This really is new. You know, it, uh, I'm starting to bring it out now into the kiteboarding world. Um, it has been around for almost a year now in wakeboarding and it's taking off. Uh, Slingshot is behind it 100%. The projects, uh, you know, they're the distributors and, you know, obviously they're pushing it. And all feedback I've had so far has been nothing but positive. Wakeboarders and kiteboarders alike. Um, Matt Sexton, for sure, and he's somewhat my partner. Um, the whole CKA, the uh, Collegiate Kiteboarding Association, have been regularly visiting the projects in Orlando. Um, I know quite a few other non-named kiteboarders out there as well that have, ju they're just, they're loving it. This is it. I, I probably know 
Yeah, pretty 15, 20 kiteboarders now that have really got into this. I mean, you can ride both, no problem. I've ridden it on a full-on wakeboard. I've ridden it on a full-on kiteboard, just with straps. And I've ridden it on pretty much everything in between. It, it doesn't really matter. It just depends on what you want out of it. It's, it's just like kiting. I mean, when you're behind a kite, do you wear bindings and ride a wakeboard, or do you ride a twin tip? Um, do you ride heel bungees? Do you ride a surfboard? Do you ride a directional? It doesn't matter. It all works. So, you know, it, there is no real setup gear that you 100% uh, need to use. It's more down to you. What do you want? Ride a wake skate, ride a surfboard, twin tip, wakeboards, you name it. You can ride it. Well, it was one of those things, once again, once I saw this and thought, man, what a simulator, and I, then I started thinking about how this could be simulated into a school. Um, so, me and Matt were talking about it, and we decided we just took a regular chicken loop, and we tied it to the whiteboard handle, we put on a harness, and we just hooked in, just like you would do with a cane. And we took the um, cable up to speed, and uh, Matt was riding it, in fact, and uh, then we simulated a few crashes where Matt crashed and he still hooked in and rode on his stomach for a little bit, then slowed it down. He came to a stop and then started back up again. Um, another great simulation for it was as well. 